We're like Regis and Kelly with bases right now. Like, what oh, is it's like fantastic. <laughs> we should start but a what morning talk show. What are they, show, like, <laughs> what are they talking about? And only talk, talk about base. base. What was your favorite base? I want to know. Okay, I've already My picked favorite. what I think was his favorite base. Hey, base lovers. Welcome to today's video. Today, I have someone very special in the house. If you haven't met him already on one of my other videos, Bryce Soderberg. He's going to play every single base in this studio which there's, there's a 10. Lot. then he's gonna talk about like what he likes and dislikes about each one and then he's gonna pick what his favorite one is so i want you guys also to put in the comments section what your favorite one is and maybe what you liked and disliked about the different bases so let's get started Alrighty. okay so it looks like he has chosen this one the to start mitchell. with well it was this right is next, a mitchell right next to the so you got to tell me about this one because I, okay, I, 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 I like the two humbuckers uh, it is a really nice, um, yeah, it's active, obviously, but yeah. humbuckers. And this is the Mitchell FB700, which stands for Fusion Bass. Oh. Ooh, so you better play that genre, buddy. Or else. <laughs> and what I like about it is, first of all, the price tag, okay? It's really affordable, and but it doesn't look like a super affordable bass because it's got this quilted maple on top. Nice. Now, the way that they were able to do that, and I'm just going to put it out there, because if you get this base in your hands, you're going to notice it right away, that it's a veneer, it's a uh, quilted maple veneer. Ooh. So it's just a little thin layer of quilted maple. The whole thing's not quilted maple. Like, I have another base that is all quilted maple, okay. but okay. this is just a veneer on top of the other I wood. I like how it's a six bolt. <laughs> I haven't seen that before. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> I'm setting it flat, everything's flat. Yeah, put everything flat and let's hear what this sounds like. What do you think about that? I like the way you have your action on all the bases I've tried so far before we start filming. You always have fresh strings on these bad boys <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't great. mess I like, around. I like how the um, jack is kind of angled so you can tuck it under your strap. Like yeah. I, I tuck everything under my strap, so that's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah, great base. Well, as I've said in my how to prep for a gig video, you better damn well prep, put this under your strap. If you're not tucking, if you're not tucking, you're, you're, you're unlocking. You're... You know? <laughs> you're clucking. You gotta tuck. Yeah, and I'll you gotta tuck. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, tuck yeah. that. This is a, probably a bass that would be more obviously in the fusion realm, the jazzy yeah. realm. Um, I love the the feel of these basses. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I could play these on any gig; it would feel great. Um, but the look and the aesthetic to it is is a very active, like punchy sound to it. I like it. But it, yeah, I would. I probably play this bass in a band at the Baked Potato, like doing some fusion. It's probably like slappy <laughs> stuff. Yeah. The Baked Potato is this place on Ventura in the Valley where they do so jazz. I would, yeah, I would slap this. Yeah. Well, that's probably why it's called a fusion bass. I really like the little abalone inlays. Those are so oh, cute. Oh, yeah, actually, those are dope. Those are dope. Those are dope. Okay, so like let's move on to the next bass. Yeah. Fan uh, fretboard. Yes. Oh. I've always wondered how these things work, but they do. Smooth, it's like smooth jazz. Okay, I turned up the gain on this. Oh, this is like a spaceship. Okay, I gotta tell you, there is too many choices. Like, I don't want this many choices. I just want a couple knobs. Yeah. I am that bass player that the guitar players make fun of where they're like, they just want two knobs and plug it in. <laughs> like, yes, yeah. that is what I want. I can set up in two seconds on the stage, you know? I just need two knobs and an amp and I'm good. Still, I love the, so this is a fan fret bar, obviously, it's the first thing you notice. I always, like, wondered how these babies work, but they do, and, um... Okay, sorry, this is the Ibanez SRFF805. Yes. I've only played one other bass with fanned, uh, a fanned fretboard. Um, all these basses that you have are really, they're just set up really well. I love the action on them. Um... This is Ash, by the way. Oh, it's Ash, okay, mm -hmm. with the Rosewood uh, fretboard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of good bells and whistles on this, I'm sure. It's 
tonally, if you're recording with this, I think it would be really versatile. That's Probably what, a great recording bass. That's what my engineer loves about it. My engineer, Alex. <laughs> also has the, you know, you can tuck. Yeah. <laughs> has an angled jack. Which I like. But he he's sure thinks this, it's great to record with because you can really control the sound yeah. and you can get any sound out of it except the tone I want. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's got Bartolini. No, pickups. it sounds really good. It's very yeah. smooth. Yeah, Bartolini's are, are good pickups too. So. I don't know. It's very punchy. It's, uh, this would be a jazzier mm -hmm. bass for me to. Play. I feel like the level is so low. I'm just whittling away at it. Whittle away. I don't know, it's like when you go to the NAM show and you pick up a bass, what do you play? <laughs> I love the feel of it and, and the fan fretboard is kind of like it's kind of nice. Like Geniuses. Geniuses over Those geniuses. At Ibanez. Yeah. But you know what I realize is that I don't really notice that it's fanned. Yeah. When I'm playing, You're it. playing it. Yeah. But I think it's helping. Yeah. Up here, especially. Yeah. With the angle of your wrist, you know? It is really smooth. And you know what I really like? The sustain. I feel like it has such good stain sustain. Oh, yeah, could... That note's not going anywhere. I know. <laughs> it's still going. I know. Oh, there it goes. It's got a similar feel to that last bass, but yeah, you have, you have good setups. Okay, so let's try another one. Sure. Please. We're going to stick with the five okay. string, but this is a four string, five string. Yes. It's a 35 inch scale yep. um, BEAD. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. This is a Spectre. It is really hot. I got to turn the gain way down. Yes, you can just play the shit out of it. This for a, for a metal band or like a hard rock band, this would be awesome. I love yeah. the it's got a through neck here. That's, yeah, it's really it feels great. The thing about is about these guys, like the Spectres, that you've handed me one before. I love how it feels. The, the body fits kind of against. I know you. it's so comfortable. Kind of, so this is a Spectre TW thirty five. It's a 35 inch scale, so it's B E A D. It's like a five, five string, string, but without the G. Yeah. And it's got the classic Spectre body where it's like really thin and molded to you. The neck through. It's a killer. It'd be good to play like some. Like some, some Rage Against the Machine on this or something. I love to just play hard on this. Yeah, it's nice. So far, you this love is my this face. I do. He loves this face. I love it. I can tell because the other ones, he's like, okay, next. No, it's not that I don't like them. So this is like Here's another Mitchell. We're going to move on to Mitchell. four strings now. This is the Mitchell Ooh, TB500. Okay. I did a video on this. This is the under $300 bass. I've actually oh, wow. found one now for $200 on Musician's Friend. Yeah. So this one's really affordable. And it sounds really damn good. So let's see what you think about it. Like a peep, like a Fender P. You know we haven't tuned any of these basses. I don't know. They're that, singing too. Yeah. yeah. I'm just playing nothing. So sorry. You, know, nothing. you didn't get you didn't get Victor Wooten in here. <laughs> you know what? Or this Jocko. is a bass channel, and these the people that are watching are the bass lovers and the bass. You're grooving out on a bass. I love me some That's bass. the shit. Yeah. <laughs>
feels great. It's so funny because you keep referencing Victor Wooten. He's the one bass player, when I watch him, he makes me want to quit. Like, he doesn't inspire me to practice. Yeah, he makes me just go, you know what, just, just go home. He does that. He does that. <laughs> Just this picking technique that's like the thumb and the finger. So uh, he just makes me think it doesn't matter how much I practice, I will never play like him. But he also makes me realize that I have my own vibe, you know, and it's not his. <laughs> yeah! These are obviously humbucker pickups too, but on a smaller scale, like the. These are like Alnico PJ. fives? Yeah. They're dipped so that they don't have like the harmonic mm. resonance. They don't pick up voices and things like that. So if this is like a two, three hundred dollar bass, this yeah. is like a kind of a perfect beginner bass if you're getting into a band or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it like totally is. The headstock to it too. I it's know. It's kind of a boutique sort of look to it. I it's, love that little white strip. The white strip kind of ties it all together. Yeah. <laughs> With some effects, this would sound really great. I mean. I think that's a pretty versatile bass uh, for the price. That's it. Sounds really good. I yeah, love this thing. Great. Like all the other ones that you've played so far have such particular personalities. Yeah. So they're for specific things, but this one, mm -hmm. like, you could just do whatever with it. You play you this with I mean? any band. Yeah. yeah. Let's go to a classic Ooh, Stingray. Music man. This is the one that I told you that I chipped as soon as I got it. Oh, okay. Right there. <laughs> and but sometimes, right there. sometimes the chip, you know, the war wounds or what make it. <laughs> gives it its personality you want to keep them it all. reminds me of that fateful night yeah. on the fireplace oh yeah oh my god that's just it it it's this so wants me to put, i want to play it. it's so music man yeah it's like it's got that this sounds like early chilies to me early chili peppers Nice. Love that bass. Every uh, every time I pick up a Music Man, I think of Flea because I grew yeah. up listening to uh, the Chili Peppers and oh the God. early Chili. Freaky Styley. Yeah, Freaky Styley. Green Heaven. Yeah, and oh. um, Blood Sugar Sex Magic. All those, his growly like. I would come across bases like, mm -hmm. oh, there'd be this one for sale or mm -hmm. this one a friend had and. I'm going to get that, or I'll trade you this thing for this mm -hmm. bass, you know? But then when I decided I'm going to go find, like, my bass, then, um, and I searched the globe mm -hmm. of and Guitar wide. Center. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and I ended up getting this one and the other Spectre, which nice. you're about to play. So cool. the, these are, like, my two favorite basses. But this one is so particular. It's got such a specific sound. He likes this one because he he don't want to put like it down. <laughs> yeah, you have a lot of uh, different style basses. I'm, I'm digging this. Cool. Yeah, this is definitely. Well, I need a different bass. bass for every song. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite yeah. bass of all time. Mm -hmm. I think you handed this to me when I walked in here. Yeah. Ooh, oh my God! That, listen to that. Tone. Is the shit. Isn't it? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs> so this one's made in the Czech Republic. Yeah. So it's um, it retails for like twenty five hundred bucks. Through neck. Like the Spectre U.S. bases, even though they're way more expensive and they're like made in the U.S., they don't sound like this. Oh, they don't okay. have this super growl. Yeah. At least not that I've noticed. I mean, I played like the Coda and I played like. Some of the other ones, I mean, they're so expensive. You know, it's the one I, I don't even use. want to touch them. It's got strap locks on it, so you're definitely using it. Oh, <laughs> for I, you, this is like my base. Yeah, I can see why. I mean, it, the recording quality of it is just very clear. A lot of punch. Well, I had to turn down the gain on it because it's a really hot base, you know? 
like the, the first bass I had up on three quarters, this is on like a half. It's really hot. It sounds killer. She's, I love this. this. This is the shit. I think sonically, this one and the Music Man are the best sounding basses. Yeah. Bases, so yeah. Yeah. I can see why you This love it. is my bass. And one time, Alex said to me, he goes, well, what do you care? Oh, I was making fun of a green guitar or something. Okay. And he goes, well, what do you care? Your bass is orange. And I was like, no, it's not. No, he it's goes, not. yes, it's it is. It's tiger. Or... He goes, yeah, it is orange. And I looked at it and I go, oh my God, my bass is orange. Yeah. <laughs> like, I literally had not really of... looked at it. Like, I just listened to it. I mean, it's like, it's a starbird. It's a stunburst, whatever they call it. This one is interesting. I got this when I lived oh. in Hawaii. This is a 1975 Ooh, neck mm -hmm. jazz and a 1971 P bass body. Mm. So it's the Franken bass. That's why it says jazz bass, but it really has a P bass body. I had this um, badass bridge put on. This one is passive. It's just very classic. That Bartolini really cuts through. It it almost sounds like a jazz bass, like. Yeah, it it, it definitely. Do you think it like, sounds like a jazz bass? No, it, you can hear the P pickups too. Yeah. It's kind of like a perfect hybrid. Like, I yeah. like the... Except it weighs like yeah, a 150 pounds. it's very heavy. That's a so very heavy, heavy I don't even understand how like, that happened. That's like, what, 12 pounds? Maybe there's a brick of gold inside. You, unless you have one of those double straps that like goes under oh both God. shoulders. Like, and you just like look, the baby carrying you just look strap? Like, yeah, you look like the, the, wow. the, dad, the dad bass player, the... Maybe I can Old wear those with rock. my overalls <laughs> <laughs> and my high-waisted yeah, shorts. <laughs> that would be, that'd be awesome. It looks great, and I'm a Fender guy. That's my main instrument, so it definitely I gravitate knew. towards these. I freaking knew. Yeah. Sonically, I think your Spectre sounds amazing, but this is a very, like, you know, this is the bread and butter of American-made yeah, bass guitars. Like, every time there's a blues thing I got to play or something like that, like, I always grab this to record. Okay, so now that we've moved to Fenders. Yes. The classic, to the Honey Blonde. The classic Honey Blonde P. The Honey Blonde. Yes. <laughs> this is so fun. I got the strap oh on Oh my it. god, this is so fun. I hope this looks okay. I watched a really cool video where this guy just kept handing John Five like new different guitars. Different guitars? Yeah, and, and I was like... it was so much fun to watch. Why is that so quiet? Wow. That other bass was way louder than this bass. Song. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. Hear that tone? Hear that, that Fender tone? Hear that Do what bass. they told you. <laughs> How you do what they told you. <laughs> that sound. When I hear that sound, I feel like my soul has been fed like a burrito. <laughs> you don't know, nice. like it feels satiated. I'm just like, oh yeah, I feel good now. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You can't, oh. you can't go wrong. That's definitely the sound I'm most accustomed to as a bass player is that P bass. That sound. Where it almost sounds distorted, like when you when you dig into the note, it sounds distorted, but it's not. It just sounds like thick. It just sounds yeah. like round. I don't even know how to explain it. Yeah, I, it's, it's experienced, not That's explained. Your jam. <laughs> yeah. And if you're kind of crossing over from beginner to intermediate in bass, I feel like getting a, if your price range is kind of not as high as it should be, like um, a, a good Mexican made Fender P is the way to go. I would recommend that over getting like American made Squire or, you know, a, a these are this is the, the it's way literally go. two hours down the street yeah that's the only difference yeah, it's a, <laughs> right yeah, no, it, it, it oh it's good. made two hours north or south that's the only difference it's a, 
take a drive to. Yeah, to I mean, your unless mom. somebody wants to argue with me, leave it in the comment section. But yeah. <laughs> I don't but know really. where the Mexican factory is. I, don't, I actually don't know. Well, I'm hoping it's in Mexico. I hope so. I'm just <laughs> Because if it's somewhere yeah. else, we're screwed. I friggin' love this base. Yeah. It is like mm -hmm. I've been wanting this base all my life. I don't really understand why these holes are here, but well, these, I'm not these questioning are for the, it. Um, in the fifties, they had the, you know the the, the the a lot of guys played with their thumbs, and there was like a finger holder. Oh, that's this. right. But so, why didn't it come with the finger holder? Where do uh, I even uh, put it in? And this is for the uh, the ashtray. Um, Pick guard, uh, yeah. pick up cover. Yes. Which obviously isn't there too, so. Right. So they yeah. just decided to be half retro. Half, yeah. Maybe so that's what you get when you're. <laughs> yeah, retro. hetero. Yeah. But I freaking love this bit. It's got the two knobs, just like I love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't have much to yeah. think about. Volume I just tone, turn them all the way up. Volume tone. And I, I'm done. I turn, I turn my tone knob all the way up too, like all the way to the treble side. All treble in the bass. I just it? turn. We're like Regis and Kelly with basses right now. Like, what oh, it's we, like fantastic. What does Regis fantastic and Kelly do? Because you, as you know, <laughs> yeah. I don't watch TV. Oh yeah. So what no, do they like, do? It's like a morning talk show where they. We should start but a morning they, talk show. Like, <laughs> what do they talk wake about? Up and and only talk, talk about bass. bass. Wake they talk up about and whatever's talk in front bass. of them, and they're so excited. They're like, oh, they're just really excited fantastic. about it. Yeah. This one feels quiet too, because I've got this like cranked up. Every this is every time I pick up a Ricky, and I have a few of them. Um, I just think of Getty Lee, or I think of um, um, love Getty Lem Lee by the Lemmy, way. you know Lemmy from Motorhead. Lemmy, if you love Getty or, Lee, leave it in the comment section. Rickenbackers are the coolest looking bases out there to me. I, I swear, every is... photo that I have playing a Rickenbacker, it is just off the charts cool. Yeah. Like, it just looks amazing. But the newer Rickenbackers are kind of like more intelligent basses. They have the vintage tone if you pull the treble. It does give it a vintage sound. Push it in it. You can get that same low end that a P bass has and cover yeah. that bass. Probably it sounds be able to so hear it. If you spank into them. We did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Oh my God, it's upright it's time. Upright time up in this particular it's bitch. Time. pedal too yeah wow okay so give us your final thoughts what was your favorite bass i want to know okay i've already My picked favorite. what i think was his favorite bass okay i'm just guessing i gravitate towards vintage <laughs> instruments i always gravitate Gravitate towards them. I have a 1972P that I play. That's my main, and a 1972J. Oh, that sounds amazing. And there, uh, there's something about the craftsmanship back then that Leo Fender had with his team. I think he was a little more involved. That just kind of oozes personality and care into the instruments, and it still carries over. I mean, they smell old. They, they feel old. there's a story behind it. Mm -hmm. um, so. You, the fact that you have a piece of a J bass and a piece of a P with Bartolini pickups as, as Frankenstein y as it is, because it has that age old personality to it, I felt like more the most at home with that instrument. Yeah. That's me. Okay, well, thank you for joining us thank and you. thank you for watching, and I guess I'll see you on my next video.